Uh, I'd like to explain how we draw the golden spiral, which I have done in several talks before, but I want to show you exactly how we find the eye of the spiral. So we're going to draw the golden spiral, but it becomes inaccurate. We need something unique to locate this vorticity. And so first of all, when we want to draw a golden spiral, we need to create a frame. It's called the golden rectangle. So you can see here that this long line, if this is 13, this is eight. That's an approximation. Eight to 13 make an approximate golden rectangle. And we're interested in drawing some of the squares. So I'll show you these squares on another diagram. So first of all, it's always good to use templates. If you're a teacher and you're showing students, it's always good to do cardboard cutouts or clear transparency so you can get your points. So I was able to, um, by doing, by using that transparency, I, I was able to work out the square. I didn't have to measure anything because I've got my template, right? And then I had another square and another square. And you can put as many squares and each square reduces at the rate of called 0.618. And the, the word for 0.618 is that it's not phi, phi, phi is 1.618. So when we talk about 0.618, it's called the reciprocal of phi. And we, we have to give it a name, it's called phi, p h -E -E. And it's a small p, whereas the phi has a big capital P, phi. So we're reducing each square by 0.618. But as a, in Fibonacci numbers, that could be 13, eight, five, three, two, and one. But we don't know where the center is, so we're gonna to get to that. So just to show you here on a model, when I'm working with younger children, we say there's a 13 by 13 square. I take another square and that would be the eight by eight. And then I can grab another square. This would be five by five. So I hold that there and I need to put another one called the three by three. But we've still got gaps in between. So this would be the two by two. And you can see that there's actually two ones in there. So that generates a Fibonacci sequence. One, one, two, three, five, eight. Okay, so that's that one there. Now what we need to do is that we get our compass point here. We get our compass point here and we draw an arc from that point. So it's fixed point there. I draw an arc to there. So this is all called quarter circles. And I just want to draw that for you because here's a circle. I'm going to put a cross in the middle of the circle and I'm shading in this quadrant. So that is called a 90 degree angle. I'm, uh, basically what this lesson is about is that without this 90 degree quadration of the circle, the 90 degree is like a waveguide. We can't get the ram's horn, the, the, the spiral vorticity happening. So it all goes back to these 90 degree angles. So this is a 90 degree angle here. So we need this. Now we're going to do a smaller 90 degree angle. I put my point here. I draw an arc from there to there. That's the second one. There's another square here. I put my compass here and I draw another arc. And you would be surprised when you look at this smooth curvology, you quite, you wouldn't think it was actually from quarter arc of circles. And here's another square. Sub, this is the continued subdivision of smaller and smaller squares. And there's another one. And you'll realize that we can go forever and ever. So if I was to draw another, there's another square there, but you can realize it's getting clumsy now and inaccurate. So the ancient um, geometers of old, like Plato, Pythagoras, and even in well before in Egypt and India, they knew where the eye of the spiral was. This is the wormhole, the physics of time bending. So let's draw that in. So this is what all this is about, is that there's a critical um, intersection of two um, diagonals. So this is the golden rectangle. So I'm going to draw in the diagonal of a golden rectangle and I'll just go straight through from corner to corner. So you can see that there's something on this line, but we, we still don't know where this spiral is going to sink. So I'm going to, the, I'm going to highlight here, there's another golden rectangle. Every time I drew a square, 
th there would be another golden rectangle. So when I drew this square here, you'd see that there was another golden rectangle forever and ever. So now the next smaller golden rectangle is these four points. One, two, three, four. I'm going to draw this in. And what happens is that when we draw in this diagonal, the most pertinent observation is that they intersect at 90 degrees. Back to this quadration of the circle, this 90 degree is the doorway in and out of the dimensions. That's a very critical point. And what that means is that I can now continue my spiral from the macro to the micro, and I'm gonna keep approaching that center point. I don't actually ever hit that sinkhole what we call the sweet spot. I call this the sweet spot and it's, it seems to be a common name now. Everyone's using the word sweet spot, but I love that name and it's going forever and ever at this point here. And where it goes is where you can use your imagination. So I just wanted to let you know that this is a very simple diagram, but held within the, the mathematics of the spiral is the physics of vorticity and this is the key to all the future sciences and the reason why i'm showing you this is that the next lesson that follows this is that not only how do we draw the gold find the eye of the spiral how do we find the value for 1.618 the phi ratio there's another beautiful geometrical proof where i use a diagonal here we've done the diagonal of the rectangle, of the golden rectangle, but I'm going to use another diagonal of the double square, double unit square, to, to geometrically ascertain the, the value of 1.618, which goes on to, to infinity. This is the mathematics of infinity. Thank you.